Was Mary a perpetual virgin? When Protestants object to the perpetual virginity of Mary, it's usually coming from a good place. But this modern Protestant understanding that Mary was not a perpetual virgin is actually rather recent historically. The early Christians believed that Mary's perpetual virginity leads to a proper doctrine of who Christ is. First, let's address the main Bible passages that Protestants point to when objecting to Mary's perpetual virginity. Matthew 1 25, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So the word here is till or until, and Protestants will say that they did not participate in marital relations during the pregnancy, but did so after. But the word here in Greek, eos, is actually used to denote eternity. For example, in Matthew 28, 20, I am with you always, even unto eos, the end of the world. Amen. Does this mean at the end of the world, Jesus will abandon us? No. He will be with us now and forever. Matthew 13, 33 also proves the same point. Even the early Protestant reformers held to the perpetual virginity of Mary. Here is a quote from John Calvin responding to a 4th century heretic who wrote against the perpetual virginity of Mary. The inference he, Helvidius, drew from it was that Mary remained a virgin no longer than till her first birth and that afterwards she had other children by her husband. No just and well-grounded inference can be drawn from these words as to what took place after the birth of Christ. Martin Luther also writes the following, Scripture does not say or indicate that she later lost her virginity. When Matthew 1.25 says that Joseph did not know Mary carnally until she had brought forth her son, it does not follow that he knew her subsequently. On the contrary, it means that he never did know her. Now concerning the scriptures and references to the brothers of Jesus, like in Matthew 13.55, now the word here for brethren in Greek is adolphus, which has many biblical meanings, including cousin and other relations. John Calvin writes, under the word brethren, the Hebrews include all cousins and other relations, whatever may be the degree degree of affinity. Helvidius displayed excessive ignorance and concluded that Mary must have had many sons because Christ's brothers are sometimes mentioned. When we read the early 2nd century Proto-Evangelium of James, it talks about Joseph being an old man that already had sons from an earlier marriage and was chosen by God to be the guardian of Mary. Early Christians understood Mary's womb to be a prefiguring of the Holy of Holies, made holy by the indwelling of the incarnate Logos. But why is this important? Well, because a denial of the perpetual virginity of Mary is a denial of the incarnation and its implications. That the holy God coming down from the glories of heaven didn't in any way affect the physical. It leads to a dualistic Christianity where the physical is no longer important to the spiritual. It denies the Old Testament events when people met and were touched by God and it affected them physically. I want to pose two questions for Protestants. If Mary had other children, why was she given to John to be taken care of? and not one of her other supposed children. And my second question is, why did Christians, including Protestants, for about 1700 years believed in the perpetual virginity of Mary? It was around the 17th and 18th centuries where this new understanding that Mary wasn't a perpetual virgin began to emerge among Protestants. I hope this was helpful. God bless. If you like the content, like, share, comment, subscribe for more and follow my social medias in the description below. I'll see you guys next time and may the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you.